Just remember, boys, it's not the size of the rocket that matters, it's the thrust. So I put that PhD in physics on hold to create some fun things. And one of those things, my AI project is now out. It's called AIMyInterior.com. Take a picture of your living room. You can turn it into any interior design style. It takes 30 seconds. And someone was arguing in the comments the other day saying, Is this just an inferior mid-journey? No, you get terrible results in mid-journey if you try and do what we've done. You can try, but it will not give you the same interior. It'll change completely your room. It won't look anything like it, okay? Whereas ours, the algorithms we use to map your room are very different to what Midjourney is doing when, they, when you try and do like a pick-to-pick -pick thing. And then not only that, we've trained our model specifically for interior design. So not only it'll re-sort of create your room almost exactly, but it'll make subtle style changes for those interior design styles. Very different to Midjourney. And this guy clearly didn't know what he was talking about. So it's not it's actually superior to Midjourney for this use case. It's also free for a limited time. You don't need a credit card. So come get in whilst you can. Also about to launch AI My Cars. So look out for that one. That is so close. We keep running into problems, but I'm launching it very soon. Men have a peculiar fascination with these large, powerful things. And I am no exception. So let's watch some rockets. Black Arrow. Hey, the flying lipstick. It was Britain's first, I think. Uh, they uh, It was kind of doomed to fail, but it, it flew anyway. I love that they've got a human for scale. Electron. I love Rocket Lab. The guy who started Rocket Lab, just across the ditch from me, over in New Zealand, uh, Peter Beck. The guy has, like, no formal education. Just started a rocket company. He's pretty amazing. He comes from a place called Invercargill in New Zealand, right down the bottom, the very bottom, how you get to like Antarctica. You can also go from another place, but um, it's like, there's like nothing down there. <laughs> it's country boy. Minotaur 1. Atlas SM65. Oh, that was the, that's the first uh, inter, intercontinental ballistic missile, actually. Um, I'm pretty sure. Sputnik. Mm hmm. The very first to launch Yuri Vega. That one actually failed um, just the end of last year. What is it? Like three failures in the last eight outings now. So that's it's not good for Europe. Vostok. It's the one that carried uh, Valentina, I'm pretty sure. Titan 2. Um, that's again. That's a that's an intercontinental ballistic missile. I think they, those were designed to launch from like underground silos in case there's a nuke attack. You know they could still be launched. Delta two, nothing needs to be said there. This is a great video. GSLV, geosynchronous space launch vehicle i believe um so this is the isro the indian space research organization you can see that little flag awesome rocket soyuz another russian spasiba horoshaw Ariane v Ariane five so this um actually they're about to launch in a couple days they're launching the juice mission it's a jupiter mission they're going to look at the icy moons of Jupiter. I'm actually really excited for this because, so this is going to be the first mission that um, we actually orbit a craft around a moon, another moon. So the target is Ganymede, which is one of my favorite moons. Um, they're going to make a couple orbits of Europa, which is really exciting, my favorite moon. Uh, we could talk about these for days. S subscribe to the channel. There's heaps of videos on this stuff. I won't talk too much longer, but um, there's going to be a lot of firsts. This launches in two days. So you're probably all focusing on the Starship, which I'm sure will be later in this video. But man, I'm more excited for this because we're gonna, this thing is going to Jupiter and it's going to perform the first lunar Earth assist, gravity assist, which is going to be dope. Juice. H2A. Oh, this is um Japanese rocket. Um, they, they actually, uh, there was a big explosion, wasn't there, recently? Uh, was that the 2A or 2B? Because there's, there's another version of this. No, sorry, 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 sorry. I got mixed up. That was the H3. So, 
this was the previous um so this h3 they've been developing for like the last 10 years they just recently tried to launch it was it last year yeah just last month they tried to launch um the h3 they've been working on it for a good decade and um it yeah it exploded they a big i can't remember the exact quote the government said a regrettable move or something but um it's not good Long March 3B. So that is the Chinese one, isn't it? Um, you can see the United States on the... That's funny. Launch from... I can't... I can never pronounce it. Sichuan? <laughs> Special. So we nothing needs to be said there. Obviously the first reusable orbital spacecraft. Look how big it is. Wow. H2B. Oh, so they did show the other... In Nippon. I love Japanese culture and just everything Japanese. <laughs> so this is the uh, Russian version of the space shuttle, which they basically just stole, by the way. If you don't know the story of this, it's quite amazing. So NASA, right? It's not a military thing. So they didn't... The documents for this space shuttle weren't, like, classified or anything. It wasn't seen as, like, a weapon. And so they basically had them on just, you know, just it for the public the public could look at these documents and Russia actually stole or essentially stole them and pretty sure it's the first like digital espionage in history because they saved a lot of years of work by just taking their designs now this thing was quite different but I mean just look at it but they did steal a lot of like even the computer systems the the material a lot of it um there was lots of differences though like this thing had like uh jet engines on it it also could be flied without anybody autonomously uh it only flew once and it was very successful and then just a few years after the um you know the soviet union collapsed and so that was the end of this thing but and then when was it 2002 or something around then that uh the bunker that it was in collapsed and it destroyed it and Gara A5. Another very cool rocket. Just another Russian satellite launcher. Basically, I think they just... I just was reading something about them as well. Falcon 9. Nothing needs to be said. The first rocket to land. <laughs> it's awesome. Falcon 9 Heavy. That's the one that launched the bloody car. I'm wondering if um they're going to launch any interesting payload with Starship. But I don't think they are. I think they've already said there's... There's not, whereas they kind of, we already kind of knew about the car. And if you didn't know, Starship's about to launch. Like, it was meant to be maybe the 17th of April, but I think Elon just said maybe the end of the third week. So maybe a week and a bit after that-ish. So there's lots of famous rockets here. There is one. The N1. Big Russian one. Saturn V. You know, did all the... The workhorse of the Apollo program. Ares 5. Starship. Look at that thing. So cool, man. I am so excited for this launch. That's a great shot. Wow, look, how, look at the scale. Look at this little human. So, I can't wait to see this thing. And, uh, yeah, hopefully it can land. So, this top bit is going to try and land. I think they're landing it in uh, in in the ocean, just off Hawaii. I'm pretty sure. But yeah, just a quick video today, guys. Hope you enjoyed something different. Let me know down under what you want me to watch. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video; it'll help. And if you want to check out something else I've created recently, created CalVPN, the first post-quantum VPN in the world. Come check it out.